I've always made films that I really want, uh, wanted to make. Um, let's say that probably I have a, a taste in films that is relatively mainstream. The films that, um, uh, if you look at the end of the year, at the top 20, most of the films in the top 20 I, I li I've liked seeing. So um, it's not that um, I have to do an effort to be mainstream. <laughs> On the other hand, having tasted uh, that broad audience, I will always be very conscious when I make a film, even when I make a film like um, Loss, uh, Lost, not to be confused with the American television series on, on, on the island, um, uh, but Loss is based on a book with very, well, non-sexy themes. It's about the multicultural society, it's about euthanasia, it's about the impossible love between um, a young journalist and um, somebody from Pakistan seeking asylum here. Three of the most unsexy themes you can think of. Well, then I try to find a way to tell that story and still reach a wide audience because it would be much more easy you to make it and, and reach 10, 15,000 people preaching for the converted, as the English say, instead of finding a way to tell your story and reaching 100,000 people as loss has, has done. Um, for me, that's much more interesting. I also find film is a very um, expensive uh, medium uh, to bring your, your, your story across. Um, if you spend a year of your life and, and, and several millions of euros uh, making a film, I think you almost have a moral obligation um, to be conscious of to be conscious of, of the, uh, the the money and the talent and the time and the energy involved, and you have the goddamn duty to reach as broad an audience as you can possibly can. Cultural identity is reflected in films. Absolutely, that's why, for instance, to be very very concrete, the European film does not exist because there is no Europe. There might be a cano an economic entity called Europe, and God knows that is difficult enough as it is, but there is no culturally united Europe. I mean, we are um, a, a continent with several regions and several languages and therefore several cultures. And if you look at a Portuguese film, that will reflect Portuguese culture. If you look at a Scandinavian film, that will reflect Scandinavian culture. And when you look at those films, you will somehow see that cultural identity reflected in those films. The language is a very decisive, a very defining element. Um, the fact that if you see a film that is set in Berlin, you know, Berlin is a recognizable city, certain regions are, are recognizable. Um, Rumskop, which was a very successful Flemish film, uh, obviously the region where Rumskop is, is situated, Sintruiden, is not um, immediately recognizable for somebody in Portugal or, or somebody in, in, in Stockholm, but um, you feel the authenticity of the setting. It's also no coincidence for me that if you look at the most successful European films, they are never Euro puddings or films that try to be international. They are mostly films that <laughs> are truly reflective of their cultural identity. If you look at Am Amélie Poulain, which is one of the biggest successes, uh, and not only in its native country in France, but all over Europe and even the world, is there anything more French than Amélie Poulain? If you look at the successful German films of the past 10 years, the Bader Meinhof Connection, um, Lola, uh, uh, um, uh, Lola Rent, all these films are very specifically German films. So my theory is that the more local you are, somehow the more international you can be. The bigger the country, the more diverse the, 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 the cinema. I mean, there are in France, France is a very big territory, that means that you can make commercial films in France, that you can make films that make their money back by people going to see them, that you're no longer totally dependent on subsidies. So you have French comedies, French action films, the films that Luc Besson makes, for instance, are um, maybe not, uh, not necessarily cultural products, even though they too are, are, are f if you see them, you see the French elements, you recognize the, the, the French elements. But, but, uh, and, and even then, I mean, a, a film like Bienvenue chez les Ch'tis, which is, very, very French, even old-fashioned in a way, strangely enough, was successful 
outside of France as well. So the wonderful thing about, about cinema is that there are very few rules. There is no like, uh, no, there are no recipes. If you follow the recipe, you will have a successful film, be it in your own country or, or internationally. But I absolutely believe in the fact that we should support strong national film industries and basically forget about, about, about Europe because that is an artificial idea that over the past 20 years has um, uh, drained a lot of uh, money from local film funds into this, this, this moloch that um, is uh, and will always be uh, uh, something artificial. There's a tsunami of films uh, heading our way and um, it's impossible to see them all. So uh, which choices to make, that's very difficult, let alone which films you have to try and see from the past. Because you know this is the 115th year of film history. Um, I was born in, in 1963, I started going to the cinema in the mid 70s and even then it was already impossible for me to, 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 to go back in time and, 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 and fill in the, the, the 60 years that I, that, that I had already missed. So somebody who is starting to see films uh, now um, has um, a backlot that he will never uh, be able to, to, to manage to see. Um, so which films do you have to try and see? Um, I think there's a number of classics that uh, you have to see, even though some of them are quite damaged by the passing of time. But yeah, you have to see Metropolis, and you have to see The Birth of a Nation, and you have to see um, Citizen Kane, and you have to see Sunset Boulevard. So you have to see, let's say, the, the 50 most important films, films that for whatever reasons were influential in their time and, and beyond. And then it depends which type of films you like to see. I mean, you know, sometimes I feel like a comedy, sometimes I feel like a drama. Um, do you like art house movies? Do you like popcorn movies? Do you like the two? Um, you have to make your choices based on the information that you have. The essential Flemish film that young people should see. Um, I find that very difficult to, to answer because um, if, you, if I look at my favorite Flemish films, films that for me have, um, are milestones in, in the development of the, 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 the Flemish uh, audiovisual industry, then you have Dance, which is a very traditional um, epic uh, about social injustice uh, uh, around the turn of the, of, the, of the century. But you also have uh, the Alzheimer case, the memory of, of a killer, which is a, a very slick um, book adaptation, uh, a thriller, uh, which obviously um, is more influenced by American um, films than, than by European films. But both films are somehow milestones, crucial films within the history of Flemish films. You know, The Godfather, um, Jaws, um, the, early, the early Spielberg uh, films, um, The Exorcist, um, the intelligent American films of the 70s. The, the, the 70s was a very interesting decade for American film. There were, there were two decades, I mean, the, the, the late 30s uh, with 1939 as, as truly the golden year for American film. And then we had another decade in the 70s where, where American films were interesting and, and alive and, and um, relevant. Um, and, and, and there was this outburst of, of, of youthful energy and, and creativity. And, and thank God that was the decade that I started seeing films like consciously. Um, so that are the films that influenced me. There are films that I've seen when I was 15 that completely blew me away at the age of 15. But when I see them again now, I go like, what the fuck was I thinking? Because they're, they're dated. Uh, time is, is, is a very um, harsh judge of, of, of films. Um, it has to do with your personal emotions at the time of seeing the film. There are so many, that's why the whole idea of, 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 of film reviews is, is ridiculous. It is such a subjective experience. People look at a film with their own personal baggage with their culture with their with their emotions and so on it's 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 obvious when you're totally in love 
you will look at the rom-com completely differently than when you've just <laughs> when then when, then you then when you just come out of a relation so there are so many elements that that influence that I am Jan Verheyen and you are watching See Me TV.